Chicago voters will head to the polls again next month to choose between two candidates who advanced to a runoff in Tuesday's primary for mayor. The two contenders, Cook County Commissioner Brandon Johnson, who we spoke with on yesterday's show, and former Chicago Public Schools Chief Paul Vallis, who joins us now. It's great to have you on the show. Thank you for being on this morning. Mr. Vallis, thank you so well, much. Well, good morning. Uh, Com <laughs> Commissioner Johnson came prepared with some Bible verses. Yes, you, he did. You do not have to provide Bible verses, but we would but like to can. tell. We would like like you to tell us uh, why you should be Chicago's next mayor. Well, because Chicago's, <clears throat> excuse me, in a leadership crisis, and if you look at the problems that the city is facing, from a degraded, demoralized, poorly read, led police department to a, a school system that uh, families are leaving in record number, or for that matter. Uh, consistent budgets that have never been equity uh, investment vehicles and have really neglected the city's most hard-pressed, underserved communities, it's all really been a product of bad leadership. And I, I'm offering the type of quality leadership that is needed, and not just a solo act, the, an individual who can draw from the community the type of leadership needed to get the city back on track. And let me point out that this is something I've done before in the city's budget crises early in the daily administration, taking over to Chicago Public Schools when Bill Bennett had called it the worst in the nation, and then two years later, Bill Clinton called it a national model, of course, doing school turnarounds for Ed Rendell in Philadelphia, and of course, rebuilding an entire school system in New Orleans after the devastation of Hurricane Katrina by invitation of uh, Governor Blanco and Moon Landrieu and Mitch Landrieu. So, you know, I think my record of, of uh, coming into crisis situations and having great success by drawing from the community and building my leadership team within the community in an inclusive uh, way has, has proven to be effective time and again. So, uh, Mr. Vallis, we talked yesterday with the commissioner about crime rates. Uh, and whenever we're talking to leaders of cities and we talk about crime rates, they'll say, well, overall, crime rates have actually gone down over the last year from 21 to 22. Not the case, obviously, with Chicago. Overall crime, if you compare 22 to 21, it's up 22 to 20. Uh, it, it's up what what is the problem? Why is because Reverend Al and I talk about, you know, the crime crisis uh, in Chicago nonstop uh, and it doesn't nothing ever seems to change. Why does crime keep going up in Chicago? Well, let me point out that even prior to 2019, when crime spiked, Chicago had more murders than New York and, and L.A. combined because the city has never uh, attacked the underlying causes of crime uh, in the community. And that's historic disinvestment in communities on the south and west sides. So you're not going to get at the underlying causes of crime until you have that type of investment strategy. And I've articulated in great detail how I, I would approach that. But the spike in crime since 29 was, I believe, the direct result result from two things. One is the systematic shutting down of schools for 15 consecutive months, 200 murdered uh, school-age youth since 2019, 17 years and younger, 95 percent of those students were not enrolled in school, and uh, 8 percent of the arrests for murder, 9 percent for shootings, over uh, 50 percent of the arrests for carjacking, school-age youth, 17 years and younger, 95 percent of whom were not enrolled in school. So clearly, clearly, the, the shutdown for 15 consecutive months, uh, uh, no school-based activities, campus activities for a district that's one of the poorest in the country, had devastating consequences. I will make one other point, too. The city has never had a systematic, comprehensive plan for returning citizens. I'm talking about individuals who are returning from incarceration. So there's no port of entry. There's a lack of housing, a lack of economic opportunities. There's obstacles to them being rehired. So you need to get the schools in the game. You need to, in effect, get the, uh, get the uh, deal with this issue of returning citizens. That's, that, that's said and done. There is no substitution for a policing strategy that puts the police officers on the local beats and on the transit platforms. Imagine New York with nothing but private, with privatized security s securing its transit system. Well, now you know what Chicago is like. Half the riders of public transportation polled indicate that they're afraid to take public transportation because it's unsafe, because we have unarmed security uh, uh, w with no power to arrest, basically providing security in our transit system. 
Uh, Mr. Vallis, Al Sharpton, you were heavily endorsed by the police unions uh, during this primary, and uh, Chicago has had heightened crime, uh, crime rates are uh, undisputed, and as Joe said, we talk about it all the time. But on the other hand, you've had cases like Laquan McDonald and uh, cases of police abuse, where in fact the city is under a consent decree now as right. we speak. So how do you thread that needle if you were to be successful? How do you deal with com uh, coming with a strategy, as you claim, uh, that would bring down crime without having police going overboard and dealing with this consent decree problem and not having uh, more uh, situations like Laquan McDonald? Your police chief resigned two days ago after the right. election. Do you have in mind someone that could really become the police chief that would be able to have the balance where we can deal with bringing down crime without police becoming abusive? Right. Well, you know, let me respond first to your broader question. Your broader question is this. I actually came in and negotiated an eight-year contract between the city and the, poli and the police department, and the uh, Fraternal Order of Police, a, con a contract that was five years overdue, and there were 2,000 police officers who were prepared to retire had they n not secured a contract. So just imagine Chicago already down 1,700 officers, down 3,700 officers. I also insisted, I took, I took on the contract for two reasons, uh, or for, with two prerequisites. One is that they had to embrace all the accountability provisions that were consistent with the consent decree and that were that the sergeant's contract had included. Those were the accountability provisions that the police reformers were, were advocating for. Second, that I not be compensated. Uh, I got that contract passed. It had 80 percent support of the rank and file, uh, is historic plurality. Uh, the the rank and file will f will uh, embrace reform while at the same time uh, feel that they're being supported by a mayor who recognizes that police need to have a normal schedule that police need to be deployed to the local beats rather than moved around all all over the city consistently and that police will have the leadership which I will promote from within who have their respect and who have earned the right to lead and I believe that I'm going to continue to fully implement the consent decree while providing communities with the type of mm. local beat integrity uh, to so that they don't have to wait two hours or three hours uh, for a police car when they make a 911 call. Reverend Al, how important is that? We, 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 we hear about that, and, and Barnacle talks about it a lot, having cops that live in the community, having cops that are connected to the community, and when people call, they don't have to wait 45 minutes or an hour. Very important, because it gives people a sense of they're being policed by their neighbors, or whose kids may go to school with theirs, and that they're not dealing with people that don't understand their environment, and some that view themselves as an outside occupied uh, force. So I think that it's very important. All right, Democratic candidate for the mayor of Chicago, Paul Vallis, thank you very thank much. Thank you. Sorry. Great talking to you today. Appreciate it. Thank you very much for having me.